Hey, what's up guys, Nino here. Today I'm excited because we have updated the NBP Styles color grades. So uh, we have now a new set of 2023 styles and uh, one of the reasons we did it, apart from just, you know, wanting to do more color because you can always explore more color, um, is because, you know, uh, Capture One changed some things. So now styles, and for a while now, styles can involve like preset layers set to different, you know, opacities and everything like that. So I thought, well, we have more opportunities here, you know, to have uh, these beautiful styles that get you started on color grading, but be a lot more flexible. Now in the previous color grades, for example, here, these are our own, but there's plenty of color grading styles available everywhere. You could choose to, you know, swipe over here and look at different ones and then click and then it would apply it. Or you could right click or control click and say apply to new layer. And then you could take that color grade and you could change the, you know, pass the other. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll apply this older grade that we have. And now we have it here and we can change the opacity of it. And of course, change any of the settings. That's great. I'm glad that we had that before as an option. But now, because Capture One changed a few things and there's some things we'd still wish they'd change. But for the most part, we have this now. We have a whole new set of color grades. Now check this out. We have classics, intense, muted, and then the variables, which I'll go over. So let's look at the classics real quick. It is pretty straightforward, but as you can see, if you, you know, hover over the first one, look at your layers. You see that we have the grade itself, and then we have another layer called compression, which is off, for example. Let's look for something that looks pretty good here in this shot of Brianna. Uh, some of my favorite ways to color grade have been included in all of these. So they're great to get you started, but they all have some semblance of flexibility, which we'll show you. Okay. On these, these classic ones, you can see they have multiple choices. They're kind of like this warm one. Let's click that one. There you go. Now, obviously on the main grade layer, we could change opacity and all the settings that may be on that layer. And of course, you can add more and everything else too. You can play around wherever you want. But immediately, these are all going to have my thing of compression as an option. You can turn it on, okay, anytime you want, and you can turn it off and you can change the opacity of it. Now, what is compression? That is, at least the way I do it in Capture One, that is where I take, in this case, levels. I take the output on top here, right? We have the levels on here set to five on the low end and 250. So it brings up the low end and the, brings down the high end in a linear way, creating a nice compression, bringing down your highlights a little bit and bringing up the shadows. Now, if that sounds like high dynamic range functions like up here, I understand that, but they work a little bit different. The way we do it on levels, we can also do it on curves, is a very linear way. It's not trying to compensate for, you know, shadows being dark or highlights being bright and still preserve contrast and things like that. It's linear. So it creates a nice little sort of uh, finalization mastering that I really, really like. And I think everyone should have that option. Not to mention this compression layer when you turn it on or off is also a great way to brighten and darken after you do your color grading. So if you like that, but you want to brighten a little bit on that layer, you have the option to play with that by itself. I think that's just a little more flexibility, right? So every single one of these is going to come with a compression layer. So let's go ahead and just delete those real quick and go back. And as you can see, we have 12 of these to go through and they can all be modified naturally, but these are pretty straightforward. Um, I love all of them because I do this sort of grading all the time, depending on the shot itself, these grades can vary wildly. So grade 11 on this shot looks great. It could look completely different on yours, depending on what you're doing. Now we also have intense, just in case you want to really liven something up and pop it a lot stronger, or you have a very low contrast shot, low color, and you kind of want to wake it up. These are great for that. And again, these are, you know, grades that I do and I've tried over multiple sets of mine and they have a lot of flexibility. But as you can see, when you look at some of them, right, like these right here, let's go ahead and put, um, let's put eight on there. Okay. We now have a base layer. Okay. And this base layer can be left as is, but when you look at it, they all have slightly different. This one increases contrast and reduces saturation just so your color grade on top can change a little bit. That base layer can be turned off if you don't want those modifications done. It also does some color work on that one. You can change the opacity of it. You can go to the intense grade and change the opacity of that. You can turn on compression and change the opacity of that. Every single one is instantly modifiable. So you can go from that look to that look and go, nailed it, this is what I wanted. See, yeah, you can go into the adjustments and change everything manually, and I recommend that you do. But right out of the gate, we have immediate choices we can make because we have layers now. 
So it's fantastic. Love that. Been using the hell out of that lately. Okay. And various ones on the intense grade have the base layer. Okay. Now muted. This is a look I do quite often as well. Very subtle, very, very soft shadows, usually low, you know, low saturation. It's a great look that I love for a lot of things. And admittedly, when I run these, I generally will pull back the opacity uh, pretty strong, pretty straightforward right out of the gate. So I might do something like this really, really soft. Maybe, maybe this one. And then I'll take my muted grade and I'll soften that just a little bit. I don't want it completely too strong. Now, and we can do it with opacity, but all of these are going to have a contrast layer that comes by default off. And you can turn it on to rebuild your contrast and then decide if you want less or more. So you can suddenly make your muted grade kind of soft, kind of hard if you wanted to, but it has that option immediately. And why is that important? Well, we're thinking about efficiency, right? Okay. Uh, I got some sets here. I want to do some color. Let's just roll. I want it to be kind of soft. Um, I feel like this kind of vintage faded blue thing will work. We'll tap that. Fantastic. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to add a little more contrast back. So I'm going to turn that on, but not as much. That's cool. The muted does look pretty good, but I'm going to change the opacity just a bit. All right. I got to look. See, I don't even have to look at my adjustments. I just find something that works. And then if I need to tweak, like, oh, it's too much yellow. Oh, it doesn't have enough cyan. Then I can go into whatever these settings are and I can play around and make changes. So that is the whole point of this. And that's why Capture One allowed for layers on styles, because not only can you build up looks that require building up, but you can also modify these things quickly. Opacity can make a huge difference between a grade that you're looking at, like you're looking at this one right here and you go, oh, it's close, but too much. Well, immediately having opacity or a contrast slider um, available, in this case, it's going to be a layer. Sometimes that can make efficiency really step up. Now, we also have these six variable ones. Now, these are going to create a lot of layers. OK, so it creates an initial look. I'm going to take you through all of them. There's B, C, D. OK, and then E and F. OK, they take you through various looks, but you see all these layers that are created. This is not exactly a randomizer because we can't really do that in Capture One, but it's almost that. So let me go ahead and choose the most complicated one. Variable grade D. You're not sure what to do, so you put all these layers. The image changes pretty significantly, but it's still relatively the same. But here, all of these are at 20% opacity. And of course, there's the base. So as you start playing with these, things happen that you may not expect. That's sort of the randomization. Let's take this main hue shift. I shifted this way. Okay, suddenly we have pinks. Okay, we can play with that. We literally pick any of these layers, these toners and these shifters, and play around taking them up and down and see if you find something that you didn't see coming before, something that you hadn't considered. And you go, oh, that's kind of cool. Like that's a little bit green. So we'll take that down. Let's go to our tertiary color there. No, that's kind of fun. And our luminosity, you know, we can co increase contrast, reduce contrast, increase it a lot, etc. Now you might think, you know, we have sliders for this. Yes, but this is changing groupings of settings at once, changing the opacity. See, so Capture One doesn't give us blend modes like Photoshop on layers, but we can at least play with different settings until we find something that we think might work for us. That's looking a little bit green. That's OK. We'll make that one maybe a whole lot pink. There we go. I don't know what this color toner is doing, but there we go. We play around till we find something. This is my effective sort of randomizer, right? You got a color that you like. This grade is good. Cool. And you keep going. Or it's a great way to explore and go, now that's a look. And then you can try to recreate it in a more linear way, in a more direct way with your adjustments, right? It's a way to explore. And that's why these are called variable. So let's say something simpler like, oh, well, no, let's go variable B. OK, we'll turn on variable B and we have again, we have a color that we can shift. We have a secondary color we can shift. And then we have a tertiary color that we can shift and blend. And you never know what you might get from it that you didn't expect. or You didn't think about. And of course, luminosity that we can adjust. So that's what it's for. It's for exploration. That's why these are called variable. You know, I don't know. Most people in Capture One don't want, you know, eight layers of color grading. I, I get that you might, but it's a way to explore. It's a way to see, 
something that maybe you hadn't seen. Like I said, a sort of a randomizer. We don't really have the option of randomize on Capture One, but we have a way to explore. And that's what we created here. And I've been using that a lot lately when I'm not only when I'm stuck on a color grade, I'm not sure what I want, but just to kind of give me ideas and get me out of my own head and get me out of my own box of the way I color grade, because I that's one of the reasons I created the randomizers in Photoshop. But it's a great way to come in here and just choose something like this, and then just play and see what happens. Again, we have one tool and that's opacity. Now, if you really want to get, you know, into it and you're like, oh, I like what's happening here, but I'm going to change the Luma range, for example. Now, Luma range is a little bit of a resource hog on Capture One, which is why I think it's not um, scriptable or programmable into styles as of yet. But no matter, you can get really technical if you really want here, like on this compression. If you want to put a lot of compression on this, but for some reason, you only really want to compress, let's say the shadows, you can do that and leave the highlights as bright as they want. You can do that too. So you can definitely play and keep looking for looks that maybe didn't come to mind before because you can play with all of these different things. So that's what the variable ones are for. But most of the time when I'm playing around and looking for a grade, I will open up one of these and I'll immediately get some ideas and flow through and go, you know what? I think that's good. Maybe 10 will work. For me, it's always a starting point. It's always a good way to just kind of get myself going in a direction. And that's why these vary the way they do. They have, it's not just different looks that I like, but it's different looks that I like that I think are variable enough without being wild. I mean, there's no point in having completely wild ones, but variable enough to have you explore. And again, with that compression layer on even the, you know, the classic ones, it's a good way to balance out in case you add too much contrast or you just want to you just want to master it a little bit, kind of blend it nice together, right? So that is uh, MVP styles. It's our 2.1 that we're calling it. It's an update. If you already have MVP styles and you purchased it from the website, uh, styles two, then you will receive these because it's an update. If you don't, then just understand the price hasn't changed, but now these are included in the original set. So you have kind of a extra amount if you go and purchase this. So any questions at all, drop us a comment below or email us MVP at Nino Batista dot com and uh, we do hope you enjoy mvp styles 2.1 color grading tools <laughs>